I was waiting a long time for a perfect macro lens for my Leica SL2. And uh, there is no macro lens in the Leica SL lens system. And what you could do in the past is, and what I used from time to time is, I went for the macro adapter for Leica M series cameras, which is this one here. And uh, on this adapter, you can mount, for instance, a 90 millimeter focal length from a Leica M series lens. And then you get a macro or close-up setup for M cameras. And then you can combine this and mount it on the Leica SL2 by the Leica M to L mount adapter. So that is something that works. And I used this in the past, but clearly it's not optimal and is not the best setup for doing macro photography because what you typically want to have if you want to go for macro photography is a maximum reproduction ratio of one to one. So 100% and there was just no lens I'm aware of which I could use on the Leica SL2 for really professional macro photography. The situation then changed in the fourth quarter of 2020 when Sigma announced a new art series lens. And if you look at that, this is the 105 millimeter widest open aperture f2.8 for full frame calculated macro lens for the L mount system cameras, but also for other mounts and other brands. And uh, this is what I consider to be the perfect tele macro lens for macro photography, close ups, portraits, compressed landscape photography, panorama stitching, all kinds of applications. I'm going to look into all of them in the course of the video and will share my observations and impressions. And I think this lens is a real game changer. Let's kick off the video now. Let's start the video by having a look at the lens. And for this, let's unmount it. And let's have a look here at the mount. And what you see here, there is a rubber ceiling. So this lens is actually dust and splash waterproof, which is very nice. I think that's always good to have in particular in macro photography, because then we know that nothing will harm the camera if we shoot under, let's say more nasty shooting conditions. There are lots of elements on the lens. What I also like is it has an aperture ring here and the aperture ring has clicks. And you can also deactivate the clicks if you want, because there is a switch here and that switch says click off on. So if I turn now the aperture ring here with click on, you hear the sound. But if I go to off, it removes the clicks. And that's very convenient for people who also want to use this for videography, of course, because then you don't want to have these clicks on the soundtrack of your video but I typically use it for still images and photography. So I switch it on and it's very solid. If you look at the mechanism here, it really provides the same, I think, quality and look and feel like what I'm used to from Leica M series lenses is really cool and really is a pleasure shooting with that lens and using that aperture ring here. But there are more elements on the lens, which I should mention quickly. So first of all, you have here a switch to toggle between autofocus and manual focus. So you don't have to activate this in the menu of the Leica SL2. By the way, this lens is 100% collaborating with the Leica SL2 body. So every element you have here will communicate in the right and proper way with the camera body. So you can switch here to manual focus, then it's automatically recognized by the camera that you want to go for manual focus and you don't have to activate it here in the menu. So you also have here an autofocus lock button, which is nice. So if you have it in hand and you have your thumb here, you can actually use this in very convenient way to lock your autofocus, which is also nice. And here is basically limitations for your focusing range. So you can go for full, you can go for 0.5 meters to infinity, and you can go for really the close up area when you are between 0.295 meters up to 0.5 meters and that helps the autofocus not to pump and go forth and back and hunt for focus and uh, you can actually use them all because that's a typical I would say characteristics of macro lenses that when you go for the full autofocus autofocus might not be as quick as you want it so you can limit your focusing range here and in this way get a quicker autofocus. There is one more element on the lens which I find also very convenient and that's a switch here on the right hand side of the lens. So if you look at that and in order to understand what it is doing, let's have another look at the aperture ring here. So we can go widest open f2.8 and we can stop down all the way to f22. Well, I would never recommend an f22 because there is diffraction kicking in, 
but that's the way it is. And if you choose your aperture here, clearly you are in aperture priority or fully manual mode. You can also go to aperture automatic and that's this A here. And uh, then the camera is basically determining for you the aperture, which typically happens in program mode or if you wanna go for shutter speed priority. Now that switch, if I choose to lock it, will prevent me from accidentally switching into automatic mode. So if I wanna shoot in aperture priority, I don't have direct sight on the aperture ring. I can rely on that hard stop here and that lock that I will move and uh, you know basically select between f2.8 and f22. And no matter how hard I try, I can no longer go into automatic mode. There is no way. If I unlock it again, I can switch to automatic mode. So that's a lock. It also works the other way around. If I'm in automatic mode and let's say shooting in program mode or shutter speed priority, I don't want to accidentally all of a sudden pre-select my aperture. And if the switch here is locked, this cannot happen. It will not leave automatic mode. It will stay there no matter how hard I try. And I think that's convenient. That's something quite thoughtful and will help accidental settings on your camera lens, which you don't wanna have. The game plan for the rest of the video is as follows. I wanna share lots of sample images I took with that lens on the Leica SL2 in the last weeks. And I should say this lens turned out to be super universal for portraits, for landscape, and of course for macro photography. So we'll spend now the next minutes in looking into these sample images. I will share my observations and confirm what I said at the beginning of the video. I think this is the perfect telemacro lens for L-mount cameras and in particular for my beloved Leica SL2. The optical construction of the lens is quite complex. So we see here on the Sigma website that we talk about 17 elements and 12 groups. We also see here that the minimum focusing distance is close to 30 centimeters, so quite close, and that you have a maximum magnification, which I typically call the maximum reproduction ratio of one to one, which is 100%. The weight of the lens is 715 gram, so I think still okay. And it's constructed for the Sony E-mount as well as the L-mount Alliance and in this way fits very well my Leica SL2. The price tag of the lens is around $800 and likely you will get it a little bit cheaper in the course of the year. To test out the lens, we start with that particular flower for a super sharp macro photo and then continue our journey. When shooting widest open at f2.8, the depth of field gets really, really shallow. Also, of course, we are talking about 105 millimeter focal length here. Clearly, I switched then to manual focus and was using the fine adjustments of the focus ring of that Sigma art lens to get things sharp and in perspective. And since the camera was quite shaky with vibrations from these focus adjustments on the focus ring, I decided to go for the 12 second self timer on the Leica SL2 to make sure there are really no vibrations and nothing can endanger the sharpness of the final image. Checking the image then, it looked really good and I was quite happy, but I wanted to increase the depth of field and clearly the best way to do this is via focus stacking, which needs to be manual on the SL2. For this, I mounted the Leica Sigma combo on an easy focusing rail and there is a separate video where I shoot five different cameras in macro photography on that rail in combination with an easy close-up lens and includes Leica, Hasselblad, Sony, Nikon and Canon. In contrast to various other cameras, the Leica SL2 has no focus stacking, so I actually moved the camera on the rail, shifted the focus and stacked 32 images for depth of field. The best software for stacking photos or frames, in this case, as I said, 32 frames with a shifted focus is actually a software called Helicon Focus. I use this repeatedly on my channel and uh, it's a professional software. It works very, very well. And uh, we will now look at the result in Lightroom in order to see what we achieved. Storing the stacked image out of Helicon Focus delivered that digital negative or raw file you see on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you see how I process the image later in post in Lightroom. Shooting parameters here is a two second exposure at F11 and an ISO of 100. And if we look into that image, there are so many details to discover. It's very nice. I would actually suggest that you focus on the right hand side now because that's after post-processing and it looks really, really good. What I find here and what I see here, there are these tiny little almost crystal type structures in that flower, which this art lens from Sigma 
really let's shine I think is quite nice what we see and there are so many details to discover given the large resolution of that image you could print this very large if you want it and have that flower printed on the wall and in this way show the wonders of nature so quite nice I think it's time to move on to the next application I want to demonstrate with that lens here and that will be portraits Shooting portraits with tele lenses is one of the most common applications of these tele lenses, of course. And you see here a portrait taken with that Sigma Art lens and it is super, super sharp. And uh, I think it's astonishing what this lens is delivering here. Here's another example. Clearly, if you open it wide to f2.8, you get a shallow depth of field. Here the focus was sitting on the eyes. And if you look at the level of sharpness and clarity, you get here you even see a tiny little reflection in the eye from me as the photographer in the background here quite nice and a quite good result and i think in general this lens in uh, portrait and studio photography will really shine i'm not a pet photographer but i couldn't resist to take a few portrait shots of a cat of friends and uh, this is an exposure of 1 over 400 seconds aperture is f 4.0 so you get really smooth background here and an ISO of 400 and if you look into the image at 100% crop here it's super crisp and super sharp. I think that lens really delivers. Here is another sample this time with an ISO of 1000 which for the Leica SL2 is not a problem at all in terms of noise. Look at the very nice background bokeh here. Aperture was again f 4.0, 1 over 400 seconds and the level of detail in that cat's face is just blowing me out of my shoes. Really, really nice. So if you're a pet photographer, here is your chance. Just go for that combo Leica SL2 and the quite affordable for close to $800 Sigma Art lens here for 105 millimeters macro. And you will actually get very, very good results and will enjoy taking photos from pets with that combo a lot. In order to get an even better impression on how shallow your depth of field is, look at that firefighter here. And uh, this image was taken at f2.8, so widest open ISO 400, 1 over 400 seconds. And the focus here was sitting on the head and the face, but even here you see how shallow the depth of field is and then your fire extinguisher here is already blurry. If I shift the focus a little bit, still at f2.8, I get my fire extinguisher sharp but then the face and the firefighter is no longer sharp and here i stopped down the aperture to f5.6 and the focus still sitting on the face pinpoint sharp now but the fire extinguisher is still not really sharp and by the way there is a little bit of noise in that image if you look here because that's taken at iso 1600 but again it's not a problem for the leica sl2 and you can remove this in post and then getting the aperture even more close to f11 we are now almost at the level where we have the firefighter sharp and kind of some idea what the fire extinguisher is but still you don't get a wide enough depth of field to get everything in that tiny little toy here sharp and in focus i think the best way to see the shallow depth of field is this image here that's a plastic toy from playmobil and uh, you see here, if I zoom in, it's sharp here in a very shallow plane, but here already it's no longer sharp. And um, it also illustrates the reproduction ratio at its max of one on one, because the size of this toy is about the size of the sensor of the Leica SL2, and it fully fills the frame as you see here, which is what a one on one magnification ratio actually means. The next application of that wonderful Sigma Art lens I want to quickly discuss is landscape photography and of course also cityscapes. And it might sound strange at first sight to use a telefocal length for landscape, but there is an effect incorporated into tele lenses which makes it very attractive to do that and that effect is called compression. And compression means that subjects along the axis between the camera and the horizon appear much closer together than they really are. And you can nicely see this in this image here where all these buildings and in the middle the church are grouped and appear closer together than they really are and where it really shines is on the next image if i would have taken that image with the faraway mountains so it's the swiss alps here with a wide angle lens you would hardly get any details but here if i crop in by 200 percent you actually see a lot of details and you get the full structure of the mountains the trees and everything's of that little farmhouse in the foreground 
and you actually get a quite nice picture with a lot of detail and compression fully takes place in that image here. Here's another image when it went darker in the evening. Again, quite nice, very sharp. The lens is really suitable for landscape photography and for all kinds of other applications than just close-ups and macro photography. And here is again where you can see how compression takes place and actually brings these buildings much closer together than they were in reality. Clearly in landscape photography, a telefocal length like the one on the Sigma Art will provide a narrow angle. And if you want to get the angle wider, you can still go for several frames. Here in this case, I had taken them in portrait mode and then stitched them together to a super resolution panorama in Lightroom, which is my next step, what I want to illustrate here as an application. Here you see very quickly how this works in Lightroom. Five portrait mode images selected now and then merged in Lightroom together in a panorama shot making sure you choose the right method here and also going for filling the gaps in the edges will create a final image which will look really good and we can then when the image is stitched together further post process it in Lightroom. So this is the final image shot at f2.8 on each of these five frames ISO 320 1 over 200 seconds and these five frames now created a panorama image with a wide angle and uh, with a total resolution of about 180 megapixels. And the reason why you get only 180 megapixels and not beyond 200 megapixels, what you would expect from five times 47 megapixels is because the panorama stitching costs you some resolution on the overlaps, but 180 megapixels is still a super resolution. And clearly you get now lots of details here. Let's zoom in to 100% crop a little bit to see what we get. You see that tree here, tiny little signs here, you see here that farmhouse and uh, you get a lot of information now in these images. I think this looks really nice and is a nice application of tele lenses in general that you can use them for panorama stitching in portrait mode and then in this way create super high resolution images which you can print very large and in this way use tele lenses nicely for landscape photography. Let's have a last look at the mountain here and you see the weather station on top of the mountain here. Quite nice. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy, of course, and peace out.